So the first thing that uh, I noticed about Marvin Bagley III is his explosive athleticism and ability to get up to the rim before anybody else can. He easily has the best second jump in the draft and really haven't seen anything like it since, I don't know, I'd probably say Sean Marion back when he was with the Phoenix Suns. So we're going to see right here, little pass down low, just gets up to the rim before any of the defense can come to help. Now, clearly here the help's a little bit late, but I mean, can't even really follow him once he gets up to the rim that quickly. And here, we're going to see that athleticism again. A little backdoor play for him. Gets the back screen. I mean, he's getting there before anyone else can. And once the ball's up, it's only a split second for him to get up in the air and finish. Now, a spot where Marvin Bagley's really going to be effective uh, in the NBA is as an outlet in the screen or roll game. Uh, incredibly quick off the dribble as well as on a full sprint. He can get to the basket before the defense comes over to help and he has really nice touch around the rim. Right here we're gonna see a simple screen and roll. A little lob there. Finishes that off really easily. These are the type of reads that I think he's gonna be able to make pretty effectively. This is a basic one. There's no help here at all. Uh, right now Morgan's glued to Wendell Carter, so it's basically just a sp You want your bigs rim running like this. You want your bigs to feel like there's a reason to go to the rim, and you want them to be active. So, right here, if he takes his time, this help defense is coming, Juwan Morgan's going to see him. All the attention here is on Grayson Allen, and because of Bagley's athleticism, all he has to do is throw it up to the rim. Here, the one area that he really struggles on and is kind of criticized on the most is as a defender. Now, I'm not saying he's a great defender, but I do think he has potential due to his quickness, his ability to move his feet, and he really has a great motor, though he doesn't show it at uh, defense very often. Here, we're going to see him get out in the passing lanes, and this is when you see his athleticism on full display. Powerful finish at the rim. And that's something you're going to see a lot of in the NBA. A lot more of the up-tempo style game, which is kind of what Duke did. But here, once you see him get it, absolutely gone. Long strides, he can get down the court easily. There's no help coming. Now, when it comes to Bagley's post-up game and uh, finishing ability, he's really, really skilled going to his left hand. Probably the best player that I've seen in the last couple years of finishing with their strong hand. He shot about 6% from the field, and that was with him trying to force shots with his left. Probably could have been around 65-70% if he had a consistent right hand. Right there, we're going to see a lob finish. And then here we're going to see the double teams coming. This is typical Virginia. Uh, bring the big-to-big -big double team. Not going to let Bagley be the one to beat them. Now, here's where I'd like to see an improvement from Bagley. Immediately, you see he's going for this spin move baseline right away which you're gonna see he ends up beating it Isaiah Wilkins falls down and he can get the dunk but what I would like to see Bagley do a better job of is when this double team's coming and this double team everyone knew this was coming it's been coming all game when you see this I'd like to see Bagley take a peek over his shoulder right here because Wendell Carter is about to be open for a split second Eventually the help comes. Even now, he picks up his dribble. The skip pass to Gary Trent wide open. Uh, Bagley's going to be aggressive, put his head down, and try to get to the rim. Lucky for him, uh, Wilkins fell down right here, but this could have easily been a charge if Wilkins got there earlier. But when you see the athleticism, he can get right to the rim after that. Again right here, we're going to see the left hand dependence. So, decent post-up position, uh, probably fine space to catch it considering he can hit that little uh, jump shot if he faces up. He's got an athletic advantage over Luke May here, but goes to the left hand and then you see lightning quick second jump, gets a couple attempts and gets the N1. Now, 
this highlights a couple things. Number one, the dependence on the left hand. This is a play where if you're Marvin Bagley and you make this move, right hand hook right here is a wide open shot. It's a bunny right here, right underneath the basket. That's an easy right handed hook. If he had a left hand, or right hand, excuse me. Because he's so dependent on that left hand, he takes a difficult shot, contested, right into the arms of Luke May right here. It's almost an impossible shot to make. But he gets up before anyone else does. And that's the one skill that Marvin Bagley has that you can't teach, that no one else in this draft has, is a second jump that is ridiculous. I can't even describe how quickly he gets off the ground. Gets off once, twice. Then for this final attempt, not really much contact, but he's going to get the and one here. And this is all about energy. Marvin Bagley's an energy big. He's not just an athlete. He's not just a guy who relies on his uh, skill set or his athletic abilities, but he works during a game relentlessly to attack the glass and makes impact felt there. Here's just going to be a simple post up for Bagley. This is a bread and butter right here. The quick left hook. That's a shot he's taken that, he's making that 9 times out of 10. It's a nice, he gets over his right shoulder, and once he does that, it's pretty much over with. Doesn't catch it too far out. Uh, he's given up a lot of weight in this matchup, but gets over the top with his athleticism. Now, Backley's not the longest uh, guy, only about a 7 foot wingspan for a guy who's about 6'11". So nothing compared to the Jaron Jacksons or... Uh, DeAndre Aiden's in the class who have a plus six, plus seven wingspans. But because of his athleticism, he can elevate over guys. Here is a situation where I think it's a little subtle thing, but I think this is where Marvin Bagley has to be uh, more impactful, and that's with his physicality. So right here, we're going to see a pick and roll. Wendell Carter, Trevon Duval is going to make the right read coming off of this. He splits it. Bagley's wide open right here. So that is a lob or a dump off pass right here. But Duval goes deeper and then there's a pass. Now, if you're Bagley, this isn't really a mistake on Bagley's part from the perspective of expecting a lob, which should have came earlier from Duval. But Now you got a guard down here getting his hands all over the ball. Luck, lucky for him, Bagley's athletic enough to grab it and finish. But what I'd like to see here from Bagley, and I think physicality is something that he can work on. He plays hard. Uh, he's never given up on plays, but when you see right here, that is a lob, and it doesn't really look like they know he's back here. But as soon as Duvall gets right here, I would like to see Marvin Bagley whip his leg around, get position on the smaller guard, to where that's pretty, you have all this space to throw a lob, to throw a pass. This bounce pass is the only spot where this guard's going to get a hand on it. So again, this is partly on Duvall, not totally on Bagley. But I'd like to see Bagley carve out more position. Right here, he's not really spread out, not really in that athletic of a position ends up really having to get it muddled and the guard actually gets a hand on the ball before Bagley does so he ends up picking it up and finishing but right there I think Bagley could do a little bit more with his physicality and I think that'll come as he gets into an NBA weight training program again with the physicality here Bagley with a drive finishes through the contact but what I wish there was more of and I wish Bagley did this more at Duke is I wish in plays like this, he didn't automatically resort to the fading. You see right there, he takes a hit. He takes a hit and he's gonna fall back a little bit. And now it's basically a running uh, one footer right here that he can hit. I mean, that's a shot he can make, again, focusing on that left hand instead of finishing with his right, but this is a shot he can make. And right here he does. But it would be nice to see Bagley, once he gets this initial hit, to get low, drive right through the defense, and instead of getting a, I don't know, 12-footer right here, he can get right to the rim and get a 5-footer. 
drive through, use this length, and get around and get at the hoop instead of having to fade here. But again, this is all going to come with time and with uh, getting stronger. But when you're comparing him to prospects like DeAndre Ayton, who is physically built, I don't know, kind of like David Robinson back in the day, I think that's an area where Bagley is a little bit behind the top of the class there. Even with that being said, I appreciate that Marvin Bagley understands the value of doing his work early. Right here, he's catching the ball so far underneath the basket, even if you want to foul him. It's just going to be an and one. He's too deep. It's too easy. So if he can continue to do this, if he can continue to get that deep, that's going to be an area he's going to be great. Again, same thing right here, getting as deep as possible going to the other side, and this time actually finishing with his right. Now, in terms of getting fouled, I think this is going to be key because right now Bagley is an atrocious free throw shooter. Uh, really hovers around 60%. It's not really going to get it done uh, for a guy that's expected to have the ball in his hands a lot as a big-time scorer in the post. And it's been a problem since he was in AAU in uh, high school. But when you're able to get the kind of position that he's getting right here. I mean, look how deep that is. The help at this point, the only thing the help could do different is to cut off his left hand right here. Because he's getting it so deep, he can just make a quick move. His quick feet, uh, quick twitch muscles are gonna allow him to get around. And this is one of the few times you actually will see Bagley finish with his right. Gets over to that uh, other side of the basket. Really good decision here, there's no help and finishes. Now, the one area where Marvin Bagley is going to be elite, no matter what team he goes to, no matter what the circumstances are, is on the backboards. He's an exceptional rebounder, great energy and effort, as you've already seen in some of the earlier clips, and he does a great job of timing his jumps and getting up, snatching rebounds. Right here, we're going to take a look at his work on the offensive glass. Opposite corner, couple tips, finishes with his left. Bagley is essentially playing volleyball for 90% of the time he's going for rebounds. This guy can knock the balls up, understands when he gets the ball up in the air with his tips, he can get it before everyone else can. And the NBA is going to have longer, more athletic guys, but that second jump is going to be in the top tier. No matter who he plays against, no matter what level, uh, this guy is one of the most athletic bigs in this class and one of the quickest jumpers in the NBA once he reaches that level. So again, going in, O'Connell missed a shot. Bagley is right there, finishes. Now I know a lot of people are just gonna look at the dunk here, but it's about that work he does when O'Connell's coming in to take this shot. Right here, he's got the defense, it's all eyes on McConnell. And when he shoots that, Bagley is ready. There's nobody once he gets in position that is going to beat him to that basketball. The jump is going to be too quick. And even if he doesn't catch it cleanly like we see here, he tried to tip dunk that, didn't get it the first time. But he doesn't give up on anything. He's right there to grab it. Finish with fourth force around the basket. Again right here, a drive. Gary Trent misses it. Then back to the tips. Back to the tips, back to the second jump. That's always what it gets to with Marvin Bagley on the offensive glass. Now, Virginia is consistently one of the best defensive teams. It was nothing different last year. Uh, they had a really good game plan for trying to contain Bagley. They did that big-to-big -big double that we saw earlier. But this is something that you're not going to be able to stop at the next level. This is the one translatable trait that if you're an excellent rebound in college, you will be an excellent rebound in the NBA. It's gone on for all types of guys, Ken Kenneth Freeds to uh, Reggie Evans. If you're an excellent rebounder in college, that translates to the next level, especially when you got a motor and the athleticism that Marvin Bagley has. Right here, we're going to see it again. It's not just about athleticism and being able to jump higher than everybody in terms of rebounding. Rebounding is about instincts and positioning, and that is something that Marvin Bagley already understands. And despite not being the strongest guy, he gets up to the basketball quick 
and he also has a good understanding of how to create space. So we see here on the weak side, shot goes up. First thing Bagley does is box out and kill Walker Alexander. It's the first thing he does. It's a missed shot. He's right there. When you do that, it looks easy. It just looks like he's a bigger guy. He can jump higher. But when you actually break it down, it's all about that initial box out. You know, really the best offensive rebounders are the ones that understand this, understand angles. I mean, the ball's coming from the opposite side. Uh, Grayson Allen's shot's going to be a little bit long. But Bagley already has that position down here. So now when he does his work early, the only thing he has to do is tap it in. Got a great bounce there. But there's no way anybody here is going to get that ball before he does. And he sets that up by getting that positioning early. I think one of the more debated parts of Marvin Bagley's game, and I think the thing that makes me put him as a consensus top three uh, prospect is his ability to score in face-up uh, situations. Now, some people don't think he has a reliable jump shot. He had a lot of shots this year that were just terrible air balls, didn't hit anything, but he still ended up shooting around 39% from three. So, in my opinion, the shot is smooth, is pretty compact for a big, and coming out of the hands, it looks pretty nice. So right here, we're gonna see him just fade to the corner. Now the setup is kind of slow. Uh, he brings the ball down and dips it a little bit, but once he gets it up, for a guy that's nearly seven feet, I'll take that jump shot. Now, right here what you're gonna see is you're gonna see where I think Marvin Bagley is going to become a phenomenal scorer. And that is out of the mid post from about 15 to 18 feet, having the ability to use his quickness to get to the basket, hit a face up jumper, or just be aggressive. So right here, he gets it, faces up. At this point, the left hand really needs to be taken away because that's the one spot where Bagley is going to go. He always comes back to the left. Uh, that's going to be the scouting report on him. And you know he's going to either finish with the left or at least drive left, pump fake you, and try to get a foul. But right here, you see a little jab step, spin back to the left, like we said. When you can set it up like that, you really have a lot of options. Because if he just goes straight line drive right here, you're definitely going to get help right here for Mooney. And then uh, Burns is going to have a better idea how to guard that. Right here, he sets it up going right. Spins back to the left. And then finishes. It's just those one to two dribbles that really makes a difference for Bagley. And right here, we're going to see why it is so difficult to guard Marvin Bagley out of that uh, 15 to 18 foot range. Because if he catches it here, he can beat you off this drive. He has this drive right here if he wants it. It's a significant mismatch. Or about six foot two right here trying to guard Bagley. He gets a lot of space and he hits it. Now, I would prefer that he just attack him and take him off the dribble here, but he's just showing all the skills that he has from that mid post area. So right here, we're gonna see a nice pass off from Wendell Carter. This is just a simple step in three. See the shooting pocket is hit right on target uh, from Wendell Carter. And then we kind of see the mechanics right here of knocking that down. I think Marvin Bagley really benefited from playing with a guy like Wendell Carter. He's probably the best p passing big man in this draft. Really sees the court well. And he allowed Bagley to kind of show off all of his abilities. And I think, to an extent, Carter was weakened by having to play with Bagley and kind of defer to him to an extent, but we see the outside stroke from Bagley right there. Right here, we're going to see the next level for Marvin Bagley. This is where I think he can be great at in the NBA. There's going to be more space. Uh, I don't think defenses are going to be able to pay attention to him so easily. Just a nice little cross right there, and then finishing in the lane. He is not overly long, as you talked about earlier, but exceptional quickness for a big. 
just catches it right here and can survey. So he can try to drive left here. Uh, Bronze Colson's about as long as Bagley is, but Bagley's obviously got a significant height advantage here. He's just going to do a simple drop cross. We're going to see him come back to the left. This time it was not as bad of an idea because Colson faded to guard him over to the right. So it was a fairly easy shot. But the one comparison that always keeps coming back to my mind when I see Marvin Bagley is he kind of looks like some type of combination between a Chris Bosh and an Amari Stoudemire. Just exceptional athlete, uh, has a nice smoothness to his game, but the potential is definitely there to be an all-star, a 2010 threat, and part of it is because of his ability to do things like this. Now here's where I need to see more from Marvin Bagley. This guy's almost seven feet tall, it's about as quick as a lot of perimeter players. Uh, not the most physical, but should be way more impactful on defense. And I understand at Duke, they do a lot of switching, they played a lot of zones, so sometimes guys are not able to develop as much defensively as they would in certain other systems. But Bagley just looks disinterested at times uh, when guarding the ball and playing off the ball. So here, we're just going to see a little simple screen. And this is against Pitt. Pitt was one of the worst uh, big schools in the entire country last year, if not the worst. Just got destroyed in the ACC. Don't really have a lot of offensive threats. But here Bagley is. He goes with Stewart here. And this is really poor communication here, but to me, it looked like Grayson Allen was going to stay with him the whole time. So Bagley's pointing here. It's a wide open three. That's something you can't have. He's going to have to be guarding exclusively fours and fives. So he probably won't be looking at a lot of uh, guards like that. But when it gets into switching situations, you're playing teams that screen a lot. The communication is key. And then the attention to detail is key. So even from the start of this play, Right here, we're not seeing Bagley give good communication. If he's actually taking this guy, you need to jump to the ball anyway. He should be taking this away from Stewart. Not that he's going to finish this layup or he's going to get that pass. But if you're pointing there and you have that, that's fine. But see, the problem is I don't believe he actually communicated with Grayson Allen here. And you're just going to leave a shooter wide open for three. Now we're going to see this again. And to me, this is even more egregious based on who he's leaving. So right here, uh, Jerome brings the ball out. All right, Bagley, who do you have? I don't know. I have no idea right now because I think Grayson Allen will, Allen will probably take whoever comes high here. Carter's in the paint, though he kind of looks a little confused. I'm pretty sure he's on Jack Salt right now. So one of these two guys is supposed to be who Marvin Bagley's supposed to be following. Just looks confused. Allen says he has him. I don't know where Marvin Bagley's going here. And right now it looks like it's going to be a double screen over here. Bagley has no idea either way. So at this point, you would expect Gary Trent's taking high, or no card is dropping assault, or Bagley's dropping assault. But we're going to see once the matchups come, Bagley's still in no man's land. This is one of the best shooters in Kyle Guy in the entire ACC. And Marvin Bagley doesn't know where he's at. So this is an easy, easy screen to get Kyle Guy open for three. That's a guy you can't leave. And there are better shooters than Kyle Guy in the NBA. Giving all this space. I understand he doesn't guard perimeter players, but that's a mistake that you can't make. And just the lack of awareness is a problem for Marvin Bagley so much space can't even see the contest at that point and that's where he's going to have to improve and when we talk about guarding quicker guys right here there's a switch so carter kind of has the help here uh bagley is on an island this is going to happen a lot in the nba against more talented guards so right here decent defensive stance moved his feet pretty well but he got his top foot too high he gets attacked he gets the ball up on the backboard too quickly. Now, a guy with this quick of a second jump as Bagley does, he should be a better shot blocker than he is. 
but on the defensive end, his timing as a shot blocker is not what you would want. It leaves a lot to be desired. Right here, he just gets breaking down, broken down the drive. Uh, Carter didn't give the best help, but Bagley shouldn't be getting beat that easily either. Again, we're gonna see an issue. Now, right here, Anthony Lawrence is about six foot seven, six foot eight, a solid athlete. I don't want to take anything away from him, but if you're Marvin Bagley, this is not even a move. This is a slight hesitation. It's going straight to the rim and finishing. I mean, he knocked him off a little bit going to the basket, but that's really not going to cut it. There's no move here. Not Probably not even hearing the talk about a screen coming to his left, and that wouldn't have even been a problem. Just a guy going straight at you saying, I don't think you can stay in front of me. And Bagley, again, is slow to the contest. Now, as crazy as it sounds, after uh, seeing the last couple clips, I do think Marvin Bagley can be a decent uh, defender, a much better help side defender than he is a show to Duke. And I think that has to do with his quickness. He can move his feet well enough to stay in front of guys who are a little bit quicker than him. And as a help defender, he should be able to contest a lot better. I understand he's not overly long, but his ability to jump quicker than other guys should allow him to get contests at the right time. Right here, we're gonna see him get a steal. And see, he's energized once he gets the ball on offense. This is a guy that his motor on the backboards, both offensive and defensive, is really top of the line. Great rebounder. See, when he gets out in transition, he has some energy. A little nice behind the back there. And he's going to finish. Now, this wasn't really his defense, but... I just want to highlight where he's at. It's being in the right spot at the right time. And look how quick he is at that ball. He got to that ball way quicker. And this is how we should be on every help side situation. He gets to the ball quick. And then he's out. Now, if I'm a teammate, I got a problem with him not passing the ball up right here. You got two guys, quicker, better ball handlers. He's going to be out here trying to make an and one mixtape move. But, you know, you got to appreciate the energy. And once a big guy gets going that far, you got to let him finish. And when I talk about the defensive potential, this is what I'm talking about. This is him, Marvin Bagley, right here on the help side. Look how quickly he gets off the ground to block the shot. I mean, he's getting that at its peak. And swatting that away. Now, I don't expect him to be a good block shot blocker in the NBA. Not too physical. Uh, timing is okay. But he can be better. Now, when I talk about he can be better, this is exactly what I mean. Marvin Bagley is capable of being at the very least an average defender in the NBA, both in pick and roll situations, in isolation situations, and on the help side. This is an example of what he should be able to do in switch situations, especially if he's on wings, uh, some shooting guards. Theo Penson is a plus athlete, but you see Bagley right here is engaged. You can tell right here by the stance, the way he's about to move his feet, you're gonna see what he could be defensively. Right here, gives two good shuffles. Pins is not really a shooter. He's gonna drive. See right here, Bagley gets right in his way. Cuts him off. Great strip at the end. This is where Marvin Bagley needs to be all the time. It can't just be a, I don't feel like playing defense today type of thing. He's got to get over, slide, move his feet, commit to this end. And this is what he could do on the defensive side of the ball.